Okay, this game is versus Last Hope of Human. He is level 40 on Europe. He is currently the number one ladder. Um, I'm Undead versus Human. We've got Plunder Isle on this map. Yeah, I'm just going to pause it right now. T 11 seconds into the game. And as you can see, the human player has started the 6 o'clock position whilst I have started 12 o'clock position. 11 seconds into the game. 11 seconds elapsed time. So if you want to fast forward to 11 seconds, blah, 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 blah. Unpausing now at 11 seconds. Now. Okay. Now, as I said, Last Hope of Human, he is currently number one on the Europe ladder. He is a human player. Uh, he has travelled up the ladder very, very quickly over the past few days. As a matter of fact, from like level 29 to level 40 in just a few days. Some, something crazy. Uh, so this has basically allowed a lot of the human players very easily to climb the ladder very, very quickly because of the imbalance of the new patch. Yeah, yeah, we'll see this stuff fix it very soon, I think. Okay, so I'm going Alter Crypt. Uh, now, as I said in the last thing, I have tended to go Fiends, but in this game I am going Crypt, Ghouls, and Standard Stuff, and then and Gargoyles. And the reason for going Ghouls and Stuff is because I don't find uh, Fiends... Well, they're quite good, but late game is just not that great. On a bigger map with many more creeps, I find fiends more effective. But with a map with not so many creeps, I find ghouls more effective. Uh, just my personal preference. And I'm going to be going a dreadlord first. Reason for a dreadlord is sleep is great, and it's also very good if very early if you're harassed because you can sleep the hero, surround it, force it to eject. Also, if you happen to meet him at any point in the game, you can also force him to portal. Uh, or if you run out of portals, you can kill that hero. Uh, but again, sleep only kind of useful early to mid game, uh, not so great late game. Even though you're sleeping the MK constantly in the late game during battle, you know, with the spells of the priest, unlimited the spells, the sleep just disappears instantly versus a good human player. Uh, so this player, last hope of human, he claims to be FS Ruzi. Now FS Ruzi is a top 20 player in the Korean. Uh, Kalimdor ladder. He may well be that person, but it's my personal opinion that he is a smurf. He is a faker. He is not the real Korean. Uh, he is a very good human although, but I just think he's lying about his true identity. Uh, I'm sure we'll find out soon who this guy is, but for the meantime, we'll have to I guess believe him when he says he's FS Ruzi. So as you can see, he's doing quick expansion, very standard human stuff so far, and as you can see, I am pulling the little creeps back to my main base. So here's the human, he's starting his free expansion, the expansion that is free that gives him double the income of all our races and all our races can do nothing about it. So that's the human getting that nice advantage at the start. Anyway, <laughs> uh, me I'm going to creep now whilst he is getting his expansion. Uh, some human player told me you can stop it with sleep uh, in a quick rush, but uh, what? Uh, trust me, I've tried everything. You can only pull it off maybe 30 to 20% of the time when a human makes a micro error or something like that, but I don't like taking risk and trying to guarantee and luck to take out human expansion when games. I want to be able to, through skill, if I'm better than my opponent, win every game. Okay? Do not rely on luck in my games. Okay, so I'm creeping the ogres. Why am I creeping the ogres? I go to these ogres very quickly because it's very common for a human player to go from their expansion straight to their opponent's ogres. So if you do any other sort of creeping pattern, you tend to lose your ogres and they tend to drop a good item such as a hellstone and stuff like that. <coughs> so human player basically just creeping, taking to keep and mining twice as fast as me. So with sleep I'm now going to creep this left hand side. And as you see I, I've now nearly got holes to the dead starting in graveyard and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take very very quickly to Citadel. I think I'm even going to take to Citadel before starting my hero. Let's see if I do that. Watch my holes to the dead. Is it going to upgrade? Actually I do not have enough wood to upgrade. God. So in a perfect world I would have started the upgrade. So I'm just waiting for enough wood to upgrade to 
Citadel and I actually force those ghouls to drop wood off at the graveyard rather than wait for them to pull in. So upgrading to Citadel and that means I've got a slower second hero. Now why am I going for the fast Citadel? The reason is I'm trying to get fast gargoyles. I'm going to sacrifice everything to get fast gargoyles. I'm going to sacrifice upgrades at the graveyard so the ghouls are going to be 0-0 zero, zero for the entire game. And I'm going to sacrifice my second hero. Uh, the second hero is going to come much later, as you can see, I'm just getting ready to build it there, forcing ghouls back, and I'll just start from second hero, so very late second hero, I'm going to put all my upgrades into gargoyle upgrades. So basically the initial ghouls are just for creeping, I will get a frenzy, uh, just in case I do have to fight with ghouls, but they won't really be used for creeping because by the time I get frenzy the entire map will be basically creeped. Now on this map, it's quite good if you can steal your opponent's ogres, but versus human, very very risky. It is possible, but the fact that he can portal to his expansion means he can stop you getting the ogres, if you can understand that. So it's not so viable versus human players to steal the ogres, but versus other races it is a viable strategy. So here I am creeping, splitting my army up into two, as you've seen many many times before. Uh, screwing it up actually, because I let that stupid null survive. Uh, making good use of cannibalize, don't think I've lost many ghouls, if any yet, maybe one, I don't know. But I don't think so. And the DK is going to join my army, start my second crit. And as you see the human is wisely building farms outside both the dragon spots. Now the good thing about uh, the dragon spots is that it is possible to creep them from two different sides, and I think that is what I'll do. I'm not can't quite remember how it works out, but we'll see. Anyway, he has eight foot men, elemental mage. Uh, he has a very late mountain king. That mountain king is a lot later than most players tend to get it. But whatever, did he make some sort of mistake? I don't know. Anyway, his MK is now going to join him. Slightly later than normal, in my opinion. And now I'm going to creep the ogres. I'm uh, going to use a move command to surround that ogre first, so I can get all my initial attacks in straight away. And before I wake up the ogre, I sleep one of the ogres to make this battle as easy as possible. As you see, Frenzy is now upgrading, and I've started one gargoyle. I'm now getting a ziggurat, and as soon as that ziggurat finishes, I'm not going to screw around and low up here. I'm going to start making gargoyles instantly. Uh, because I want to keep those drakes as quickly as I possibly can. Now I got a spite collar. It's quite a good item. Uh, if you can get the mana burns off on the MK. Now as you can see the human player going to his own ogres. The human player has creeped his entire half of the map. He's now onto his ogres. I've nearly creeped my entire half of the map. Not quite. I've left a couple of the little creeps alone but no problem. I can get them later. Yeah, that's another important thing about playing Warcraft 3. It's, if at all possible you can creep a far away spot from you and then at a later stage portal back to your main and get creeps around your base, it's a very good strategy. And he has got a Book of the Dead. Uh, it's actually quite a good item versus an undead player that hasn't got one negation. It's an absolutely terrible item from an undead's point of view versus a human player because any human player has unlimited wand negations with their priests. I see that farm, so I'm going to kill it. May as well kill it because there's nothing really left to creep, so kill it whilst I'm there. But this, the only problem with killing it is, in my mind, it makes me think that he now knows where I am, and not only does he know where I am, he, he might suspect that I'm doing gargoyles because if he's smart, he'll have clicked on my ghouls and he'll see their 0 0, which kind of you know, gives the game away, in my opinion, <laughs> that I'm going for the creature upgrades. He's got a good army, an army that's the base that I can't do anything versus. I need to just avoid him at all costs. And I take out his farm and I see him, so I start retreating there. Now he has no way of creeping those dragons. You can't creep them with the uh, sorceresses and spellcasters anymore because the piercing damage just absolutely rapes spellcasters. So no way for him to creep them, at least not now. So what he's doing is basically hanging around. He's basically going to try and stop me from creeping them. Let's see if he does that. 
Now he suspects I'm on my way around the top of my base down to the second set of the other set of drakes. But, I, but as you can see, I was not doing that, I was in fact creeping. As you can see, he's walking all the way around, hoping to meet me. Yep. Now, an interesting thing happens here, if you just turn it on to my view only, turn it on to my view. Right, so you, the fog of war is only in my view. Now you see the gargoyle is pulling the drakes back. Now I'm creeping at the dragons. And I pulled them away from the main bit just in case he was walking in there. Now you can see it's dropped a mask of death. It's given me a lot of gold, it's given me a lot of experience. And I'm very, very nervous about taking these on because of how a human can suddenly show up, but I'm safe now. They're all taken care of. Lots of gold, lots of experience. Now, the thing about the second set, now look, from my view only, as you can see, I'm worried about meeting him, but as you can see, you see that gold at the very top of the screen? Now, if I remember correctly, God, hope this happens. If you can remember from the gold at the top of the screen, just look at the top of the screen looking for any human. Yep, see the sorceress at the top. Just that little view let me know it was absolutely safe to just go straight into those breaks and not screw around at all. And that's what I'm doing. But unfortunately I meet a footman and that lets him know exactly where I am. That was very lucky on his part because I would have been very free to take these on. Anyway, I am now aware that he's obviously on his way back so I instantly take on the dragon. I don't screw around with any of the crap. I make sure the Dreadlord is getting all the experience here, but very aware that he's on his way back to try and screw me up. But he's taking his time, and it's given my Dreadlord level 6. That's given my Dreadlord that Infernal Stone. So he's screwed up quite a bit here. He's let me cle clear both sets of dragons without any pressure whatsoever. Uh, this is going to put him in some big trouble. Let's just look at him. He is now a 70 foot army. He's had that 70 foot army for quite some time. He's obviously very adept at his build. Getting that 70 army together very very quickly. Whereas I only have a 57 70 army. You can just see the perfume in there because with double the economy you can just get to that 70 foot count so so quickly. Uh, and basically without those dragons I just can't get enough resources to get a 70 foot army together anyway I'm planning on going to fight now if at all possible and I'm going to use the infernal stone the infernal stone is what an undead player needs versus a human player if they can get that infernal stone they have a chance of winning now as you see I'm taking my ghouls but the problem with the ghouls is only 0-0 zero, zero, and I only have one healing scroll, so they're basically going to die pretty much instantly. But it's the gargoyles I'm banking on. As you see, they've got the 3 0 upgrades, and then we'll rape through casters very, very quickly. And he doesn't have much anti air there. All he really does have sources because he's, he's going to portal. And I think I'm going to cast Infernal. Well, hopefully, I'll cast Infernal Stone. The DK just going up to the shop. The DK is buying stuff. What has the DK bought? He's bought two healing scrolls. Turn on the Infernal Stone. The Infernal Stone not in the best position. It would be. See if you can just see on the left hand side of the paladin, if it had been there it would have been perfect. Absolutely perfect, but in this position it's not so great. Anyway, at least it's there. The DK is... God, my units aren't in the best position, but anyway, he's got mass... Inner fire on his units, mass slow on my units. It's... Oh, I'm... Where's his MK? Oh, look at his MK! God! His MK wasn't even in that battle, and he still managed to survive it. Do you not think that's unbelievable? His MK wasn't even involved. But it doesn't matter. God almighty. Anyway, I did a wise portal there because my DK was about to die. It wasn't because I was losing the battle, it was because my DK was about to die. Uh, but the only problem with that portal is all my units are slowed, so it's going to take me some time to get back down there. Anyway, what he needs to do is he needs to try and get some anti-air together. Uh, water elementals alone just aren't going to cut it. So, unbelievable there that 
I was very lucky that his MK was on the other side of battle, but it just goes to show that Cumin are bloody good. Now I'm very very confident at this point because of the Infernal Stone and because of those gargoyles. Now here we go, we're going to see a fight here. And again his MK is not quite there very quickly. Instantly put to sleep, he will instantly unsleep it. The spell he used. And there we go, we see the classic clap and again put to sleep very quickly. And again it's woken up with a mage attack. And as you see, he's focus firing my Death Knight here, trying to get back into the game. Holy Light and Bolt in that DK. DK definitely trying to get away, but it's slow. The DK is in trouble. DK is going to die. DK does indeed die. And again, I've put his Mountain King to sleep. And he has to portal because he has no way of dealing with those gargoyles, even though they're all incredibly slowed. So all he now has is them and a Paladin, and I'm rebuilding my DK at my base, and I've won the game. Woohoo! As you see, I never won it really uh, because undead are better than humans, or undead can compete with humans. I only won it because of this map, the fact that I was able to get the dragons, and that's really all because in another map he would have raped me bad, which he has in the past. Well, actually, it was very, very close game and Tranquil Pass with him, but he did rape me in Norwood pretty bad. Anyway, he uses his Book of the Dead. But it looks like I'm just going to buy some healing potions, and he is now running back to his main base. And he's now desperately trying to build Riflemen, but he's going to lose his expansion, and him losing his expansion actually evens up the game because we've both got the same economy. Wow. And guess what? An undead with the same economy, as a human with the same economy, the undead player has quite a good chance of winning. Especially with 12 gargoyles. So 3-0 upgrades on the Gargoyles, level 7 Dreadlord, I think that was a level 5 DK, or was it like, no it was a level 4 DK, so not quite up to level 3 Coil. And basically this game is over, I'm sure you're well aware of that, but and the game has a bit more to go, it has another battle, so we'll just kind of wait a bit for that. So how many Gargoyles is that, is that 12? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 11, so it's 12, so a full hotkey of Gargoyles. As you see, I'm still not expanding. Uh, I'm not going to risk expanding. I want all available money going into units because I want to kill him. Now, as you can see, I've started researching the upgrade for gargoyles, uh, stone form for the gargoyles. It's a very, very, a very, very good upgrade for gargoyles. If you just click on those gargoyles, you can see that one, two, three, three are very highly injured. Anyway, if you're planning on going mass gargoyles, always get that upgrade because it's very, very good. Uh, it's kind of like if you've played the Frozen Throne beta, you can see that fiends now burrow, and when they burrow, they heal very, very quickly. So gargoyles have exactly the same thing. They actually get increased armor when you use them. So if you can play very, very good, and you see in battle that a gargoyle is about to die, and if you can just cast stone form on it, it'll bring it down to the ground, give it extra armor, it'll start reboosting health, it might just turn the tide of the battle. If you can do it with a couple, as you can see I'm manually stone forming the injured ghouls. And the good thing about that is whilst they're over the blight, they obviously heal even faster than normal. Now the human player is kind of moving around, he's basically Our trying to find any expansion I may have, which is to be expected because we're into the late game here. But he's not going to find one because I'm spending all my money on units. And as you can see, I've only got a 4770 army, and he has exactly the same 4754 army. So we've got the same food count of army, but obviously my army makeup is far superior to his. As you see, he's desperately trying to get. Um, another expansion and I'm actually on my way to that spot to scout anyway as it's fairly obvious is that is where he would be getting a new base 
here. We, I see it. He's gonna have to cancel it. He bye bye expansion. Our forces are under attack. Now that's the stage of the game where you're kind of behind in units. Your only real opportunity of winning is to like focus fire on your opponent's heroes, like try and take them out. But not much chance of that. DK has two lane potions. DK can heal the Dreadlord. So he doesn't really have that as an option. But that's what I tend to do when I'm behind in the game is try and focus on the hero. Like say a level 6 uh, Demon Hunter, if you can take that out, even though you've got a smaller arm, you can sometimes get back into the game. Uh, so that's generally what you should try and do if you've got no army but you want to still try and win the game. So coming in for the attack, we're going to cast Infernal Stone. I know I must have a superior army than him, seeing as he had none about two minutes ago, but he should really be casting elemental all the time to keep elementals in his army, so he kinda screwed it up. Just cast a one there, cast a coil on the mage. Oh perfect infernal, actually in amongst every single unit there, doing immolation damage, very very good. And I'm afraid guys, it's going to be a good game here. He's actually focused firing in that infernal stone, but it's not going to die. He's going to good game it about now. Good game, good game. Good game. Yeah, good game. So that was good game. Uh, Undead versus human on Plunder Isle. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. As I said before, this guy is number one in European ladder, so if you're a human player, you might want to download some of this guy's replays if you've got one today, but don't play like that. Uh, so I'm going to start this replay now, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.